Hi Yogis, my name is Sandra and welcome to my rooftop in Vancouver. Today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial on Chaturanga, which is a strength pose that you see in a typical vinyasa class. The Chaturanga is not a favorite pose for many people. It's very hard and it requires a lot of strength in your shoulders, core and triceps. So I'm gonna get started by just showing you what the Chaturanga looks like. We usually enter it from plank. And in order to get there, we need to shift forward on our toes, keep the gaze looking forward, and then begin to lower the arms into a 90 degree angle. Holding it here, not a lot of fun. But I'm just gonna talk about a few things to keep in mind when we do so. One of the first things is that you need to shift your weight forward on your toes more than you think in order to get the right angle with the arms. What happens is a lot of people start from plank and begin to lower down right from here. And what happens is that the angle then becomes too acute and crunched. So in order to get that nice 90 degree line, we need to come as far forward on the toes as you think, keep the gaze forward and then begin to lower it down. If you're lacking the strength in the beginning, which most people probably are, what you need to do is start on your knees. The same rules apply. So beginning to send your weight forward and keeping a nice long spine from the tailbone all the way up to the head, begin to come down, keeping your elbows right beside your ribs as you do so, and keep shifting that weight forward as you begin to build up the strength that's required in your shoulders. Now from there, Working on your chaturanga as a transitional element often comes in what we call a vinyasa flow. So you'll hear a yoga instructor cue something like, from the top of your mat, take your forward fold, lift up halfway, and then step or hop back to your chaturanga. So I'm gonna go through a couple different ways that you can do that. So starting at the top of your mat with feet at hips distance apart. On your inhale, lift your arms to the sky. And on your exhale, bow forward. Inhale to lift up halfway, lengthen the spine. Exhale, plant your palms and step back. Binding plank first and on your exhale, lower down into chaturanga. Inhale to the tops of your feet, up dog or cobra. And exhale over your toes, downward facing dog. Then looking forward, coming high on the toes, stepping or hopping to the top of your mat. Lengthening halfway, inhale, breath and exhale, fold forward. Coming back where we started, inhale, arms to the sky, and exhale, hands meet at heart center. So that's a typical vinyasa flow that you can begin to practice several times to build strength and familiarity with that sequence. From then, to get a little bit more into the variations that come and some of the fun, um, I'll teach you a jump back starting with landing with your arms straight but bending into the knees just to make sure that you're taking some of the pressure off of your wrists and not just absorbing that into the arms so from here lifting up the arms and exhale fold forward inhale halfway lift exhale plant the palms and jump back landing with your knees bent and then shifting forward into your chaturanga inhale open up and exhale downward facing dog this time i'll jump forward so as i come high on my toes bend your knees and hop to the top of your mat slowing yourself down halfway lift and exhale fold inhale arms to the sky and exhale heart center now one of my favorite ways to get into chaturanga is to jump back directly into the chaturanga, landing with arms bent. And this is going to require that you already have a strong foundational chaturanga first. So from this time, as you plant your palms down after your halfway lift, on the jump back, you'll need to send your weight more forward than you think. And it might be a good idea to plant a pillow there the first few times that you try this. So from your halfway lift, hands come down and as you land in chaturanga shifting the weight forward inhale up dog exhale down dog and then 
and looking forward. Coming back to the top of your mat, slow yourself down, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Root to rise, arms to the sky, and exhale, hands to meet at heart center. So I hope that those were a few different variations that you can practice. The goal of the Chaturanga is to give you enough strength so that you find that this 90 degree angle will actually become a building block to a lot of the arm balances that you find in a vinyasa class. So I'll give you an example here of crow pose, bakasana, coming high on your toes. As you begin to slide your knees into your armpits and gaze forward, you'll notice that my elbows are at that 90 degree angle, the same as our push-up chaturanga position. And I can hold myself here quite comfortably. In the same way, this arm balance position We'll find the same one in Ekapada Kundinyasana 1 and 2, um, Flying Pigeon, and Tripod Headstand. So all of those poses require that same wrapping of the elbows in, building strength into these wonderful muscle areas. And I hope that that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments, and I'll see you back here soon.